Welcome everyone to another video. This video is not a tutorial, it's more like an experiment in Flutter. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna make Flutter the Thanos of all frameworks. So if you enjoy the video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's get into it. A while ago, this channel called Red Stapler did this in JavaScript, and it really works like a charm, especially if you have a powerful CPU. The approach it took was quite simple. Convert any element that you pass to a specific function into a 2D graphic, and then that 2D graphic is divided into these tiny little particles. So I was trying to do something like that by myself, but couldn't figure out a way to do it in Dart. And just a few days ago, I came across this blog post on firedave.io by Masin, who goes by the name Marcinus X on GitHub. He's the author of the snappable library that we are going to use soon. He has used the same approach as Red Stapler and he explains about it in detail in his blog post linked in the description below. So let me just start using it and I'll explain about the library as needed. So the first thing that we can do is go over to pubspec.yaml file and write snappable and sync the project. Once the project is synced, I'll go over to main.dart and you can see that we have some code over here. So I'll just run the app to show you what the code does so far. Alright, so the app is launched and we have a simple Flutter logo, which has already collected all the six stones. And now it's our job to tell it how to perform the snap and we also need to tell the gauntlet that what is it supposed to do once it is snapped. Now if you look at the widget tree, just after material app and scaffold we have a stack. So this stack is the parent widget of all the other widgets. The first child of the stack is the gauntlet itself. And the gauntlet is simply a stateful widget which is positioned at 100 from the top. And then it has another stack which then takes the Flutter logo widget to render a logo of Flutter framework. Then just below it we have used an align widget to align the gauntlet to bottom right corner because that's where the Flutter logo feels most comfortable while snapping. Now. I'm going to wrap the Flutter logo with another widget called Gesture Detector to detect a tap on Flutter logo. And then we wish to trigger the Snap Gauntlet function when the Flutter logo is tapped. So it's time for us to create the Snap Gauntlet function. And as soon as the gauntlet is snapped, we first want to show it being snapped. And for that, we have these two sets of images. One where the gauntlet is idle and the second where the gauntlet is snapping. Then this gauntlet URL variable holds the name of the idle gauntlet's image and we have passed this variable to image.asset widget. So all we're going to do now is call a set state function and update the value of gauntlet URL. We also want the gauntlet to return back to its original state and for that I'll use a timer. Then I'll set the duration to 300 milliseconds and then call set state again and update the gauntlet URL. Great, now if I hot restart the app and click on the Flutter logo, there we go. Our Flutter logo now knows how to snap. Now we need to tell the gauntlet to do something when it is snapped. Specifically, we want the gauntlet to snap these three frameworks, actually their logos, out of existence. But before doing that, let's head back to parent widget and take a look at the other frameworks widget. So this is also a stateful widget and I have created three string variables, which contains the value of URLs for these icons. And then we have a position widget, then column. And then we have three sized box widgets, which take image.network as a child. And then we have simply passed corresponding URLs to the three widgets. Now here's where the real work begins. So we'll wrap the sized box with another widget and that widget is going to be the snappable widget. And I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of these widgets as well. But how do we determine that which widget should be snapped? A straightforward solution would be to snap all the snappable widgets. But what if you want to snap one widget after the other? Basically, the straightforward solution would not be the best solution. So let's see how that can be done. I'm going to hit control space to see all the options that are provided to us. So we can provide a duration, provide a key, set number of buckets to enhance the snapping effect. We can adjust various types of offsets and we are also provided with this snap on tap boolean option. You can probably guess what it does. For our requirement, we're going to use the key parameter and provide a unique key. So I'll scroll to the very top of the file and just create three variables namely react key, Xamarin key and ionic key of type snappable state. And then I'll pass these keys to the corresponding widgets. Now coming back to the snap gauntlet function, I'll write ionic.kindState 
dot snap and I'll do the same thing for the other two keys as well. Great, let's hot restart the app once again and now I'm gonna click on the Flutter logo. There we go, all these guys are turning to dust. So in this way you could actually vanish any widget. And the way this library works is it converts the image.network widget or any other widget for that matter into images and then splits those images into layers and finally all those layers are animated in this specific manner. It's a really cool effect. Now, what if we want to bring them back? Well, we can detect whether they are fully vanished and if they are, then we can reset their current state. So we'll check that if the current state dot is gone is true for all the keys. And if it is, then we set their current state to reset or else we set it to snap. Hot restarted once again and now our Flutter logo does the job of both Thanos and Iron Man. You should really check out that article which I mentioned in order to understand more about the working of the library in a detailed manner. And as always, link for the code is in the description below. Congratulations on making it to the end. So share this video to your friends or your programming community to tell them about this cool effect. And if you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.